James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Thank you, people out there, for joining us for this week's progressive discussions. Oh, man, seven lucky bells for the beginning of our show. Um, I'd like to have a moment of silent uh, prayer for the uh, death of Mary Tyler Moore. Um... <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of other deaths. Oh, there have been other ones, but we don't. But she's she's know, the most fa she's the most famous one. Right, that's that's how they go. Yeah, the most beloved and famous. Yeah. Uh, um, You'll learn about, but yeah, there are others. Yeah. Anyway, silence. <coughs> Okay, um, it is um, it is very obvious um, that, <clears throat> of course, uh, to do a really quick, short rehash, and I'm not talking about corned beef hash, which I happen to love. Mm -hmm. um, Donald Trump's Trump's cabinet picks <laughs> are completely and totally the opposite of his campaign promises completely mm -hmm. he um, the Republican Congress wastes no time in trying to cut all funding that helps veterans the poor and when you think about it uh, the middle class in regards to uh, increasing their taxes and cutting taxes on the rich, because if you cut more taxes on the rich, uh, logically uh, the taxes on the middle class go up, and which they are. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it, Donald Trump does not take no for an answer. The president of Mexico uh, had to get a little uh, on his high horse in, in a tweet, and they are not paying for the wall. Donald Trump tried to set up a meeting with him, and he canceled out on him. Yeah, but he spoke to him yesterday. Yeah, well. Now he's speaking to Putin today. <coughs> Not only that, he okayed the TPP. I thought he was against the TPP. I thought he froze. Oh, I thought he pulled the U.S. out of the TP TPP. Oh, Barack did. No, Barack was pro-TTP. Okay. Was. Then he was against it. Hillary was against it too at the end. So what's the deal now? Trump. The deal is TPP is in place and the Republicans are now trying to make laws so that you can run over protesters if they're in the street. Uh, yeah, you could shoot them dead. Yes, yes, yeah. over there in North, which, North Dakota. Which means, which means that the, they want to destroy the First Amendment. Correct. Okay, they now. They don't give a shit about amendments, Republicans. Now, uh, speaking of uh, the very, uh, the elitists, the very rich uh, right wingers, um, you think that uh, the the Lakota uh, Sioux Nation, uh, North Dakota, the pipeline issue, you think that that is going to be the last that we've heard of something like this? No, oh, because no. they okayed it. It's going to build yeah. a pipeline. Well, he says he's he's it's seventy the pipe seventy five miles from the uh, Indian land. Bullshit! It's going through the Indian land. Well, then then the website uh, representing the uh, company that's building oh, the pipeline. Ha, ha, ha. You're going to listen to them. Must be flat out staring you right in the eye and lying because no they're shit. saying they're saying that the pipe is seventy five miles from Lakota uh, yeah, land. Bullshit uh, land. And not only that, the pipe is from China, and another another country. So oh, it ain't made yeah. the steel for the pipe. It ain't made here in America. The pipes are already made. Oh, they're sitting. Oh, so then the website, so then the company also lied that uh, American steel's being Correct. used. Correct. It's all a lie. The they want the damn. Thing. And not only that, when the oil gets down to Texas. It's going on the world market. It's not for us. 
Never for us. Never for us. Jesus Christ, man. So you know? there, they, uh, first, they, they, um, had, had agreed, uh, they pillaged and plundered and, uh, committed genocide against Native Americans. Now, they want to do it all over again since the Republicans are in, in charge. Mm -hmm. And did you know that, speaking of having disrespect mm -hmm. for, uh, indigenous people everywhere, worldwide, did you know that, uh, the big nose Jew uh, geek, uh, very wealthy Mark Zuckerberg, uh, apparently 700 uh, acres in um, Hawaii, I, I think it's the island of Maui, 700 acres is not enough for Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, he wants uh, to, uh, he's suing the state, or, or he wants to take a native Hawaiian land, sacred land from native Hawaiians, which are outside of his estate. So apparently 700 acres is, is not large enough for Mark uh, Zuckerberg. Uh, uh, nice guy, real nice guy. And Bill Morrill tells me he's so philanthropic and, uh, and generous and giving. And he says the same bullshit about uh, Bill Gates. Yeah, my ass. There's always a catch when it involves the very rich. Always a catch. Of course. Um, some teabagger posted uh, the fence between <clears throat> Guatemala and Mexico and says, see, Mexico, it's okay for uh, Mexico to keep out Guatemalans, but why is it bad for Americans to keep out Mexicans? You know, they're using that as an excuse. You know, a high fence with barbed wire and armed guards. Using that as an excuse to build this stupid wall. Now, uh, Donald Trump seems to be like worse than the weather. He, ch he changes his mind often. He flip-flops quite often. And it always seems to point towards profit. Um, I mean, uh, uh, what the Republicans are actually saying is to the poor is either become enslaved by us or drop dead because they want to take everything away. They want it lock, stock, and barrel. Any any fund any funding that help that helps the poor, which uh, includes uh, uh, this uh, freeze on veterans' pay raise that Donald Trump supposedly. Donald Trump is supposed to be all for the veterans. But you know, uh, Barack Obama, uh, 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 he gave him a pay raise, and Donald Trump stopped it, from what I understand. So the veterans, uh, the, let's, let's just come clean. They want the veterans to come home in a body bag. Yeah. Even McCain con con consistently votes against veterans' uh, benefits and et cetera. Well, McCain, I was, I was listening to a video of how, how much he cares about the people, and he doesn't care what Donald Trump says or thinks. Uh -huh. So he, he, must, he must be a really good pathological liar then. They all are. So they, they, they flat out lie to you. That's why I tell people I don't believe anything a corporation tells you. They flat out lie to you. And in reality, the Republicans just want the poor to be slaves or drop dead. They don't say that, of course. Or get out of my country. If you don't like it. If you're not patriotic well, in their eyes, get well, out of my country. Well, a person that cannot debate intelligently... You know? A person that cannot debate you intelligently with any proven facts. Um, well, they have their alternative facts. They today. they call you names and they tell you to get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, speaking of alternative facts, this um, employee, a weather lady from the Weather Channel, hey, hey. Uh, made a video uh, showing how. The uh, I don't know if it was if it's the oil companies or the, or the Republicans in general, but they uh, they made a propaganda um, article with a photo of this woman um, pointing to the map of the, of the world, giving uh, her take on uh, climate change, yeah. global warming, yeah. and. Uh, what they did was they showed this woman like 
she is on their side and she agrees with them and and then she did a video proving that uh, global warming it, it does in fact exist and what she said is to the right wing collectively including you know the Trump administration and big oil mostly the government she was point she was directing it towards the government before you decide to cherry pick talk to scientists first no, they don't want the scientists even coming to the Congress no. and opening their big flapping mouths no they don't want they don't want any uh, that's why Trump uh, removed uh, any scientific uh, uh, data from the government website from what I understand right they don't they're not interested in that I don't know if you want to talk about profit how about making a big killing on something it seems like all of these people quite possibly maybe even Vladimir Putin himself all these people are in on it if, if it means making a big killing he said it throughout the campaign as they kill the planet by the way and people didn't I don't know if they're not listening or what they don't understand it they're it will be a business administration government is not a business No, it's an oil company there are banners out there progressive banners that state the United States of America is nothing but one huge oil company with an army with a military yeah with a military you heard it right one gigantic oil company with a military Trump and wants the Iraqi oil I think it's a little late for that. You Why know. didn't you take him when you were over there? <laughs> yeah, now I watched the video, also I watched the video of uh, Bernie Sanders uh, uh, interrogating uh, the, the cunt, Conway, about, you know, uh, other, how the, the rest of the world guarantees free college and health care as a right, and she kept on saying what other Republicans say, we, we are all for having access to Bernie Sanders having access is not does not mean having it Correct. He, he said to uh, this other man that Trump appointed he says I, I have access to 10 million dollar home but that doesn't mean I can afford to buy it That's correct. access doesn't guarantee you having it That's correct. they always say this to Republicans we are all for you having access to it well, you guess what? You're not going to get it. They they also uh, uh, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Pursuit. They say we don't guarantee happiness, just the pursuit of it. No, not. But if you're rich, they guarantee things. If you're oh, yeah. if you're top one percent or top twenty percent, they guarantee things. You get preferential treatment. Well, we're going to see just how many uh 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 uh, uh tax benefits that the benefit the rich and everything are going to be taken away from them yeah what about what about small businesses mom and pop stores Main Street are they gonna get big tax cuts but not when like you said before when the tax cuts that you give to the rich now devolve upon the middle class and the poor to make that up no then we can't go to Joe's cigar shop over here and the local delicatessen and whatever and well stuff. they seem to forget Okay. Where, what is the backbone of the U.S. economy? They seem to forget who who are the real job creators. Of course, they forget. Seventy percent of all jobs created are from the small business. Now, uh, you will see. Uh, besides a brand new promo, a brand new and improved promo, you will see. That's when we go to lunch. We go to promo. Uh, you will see a um, artist drawing of how this, how our, our founding fathers uh, designed it to be with the separation of church and state. It, it's actually a brilliant drawing. You know, I love I love drawings and uh, political satiric cartoons that, when you look at it. It like you know the picture paints a thousand words it it, it, it puts a mental uh, image in your head where you don't have to be explained what it is it's obvious what it is just by gazing at it. you 
know, it's like self-explanatory. It's so well done, it's self-explanatory. I, I, I love um, uh, artists' drawings and paintings like that, where it's like, wow, that explains it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just want to say greetings to my friend, uh, Mr. Dave Coulter, uh, our official craft beer review wizard of uh, Everything is Food. And uh, we did a show and it went very well, our first show, and we will do many more. Um, of course, I'm going to salute um, former WWE pro wrestling star and personal trainer extraordinaire as well as a commercial model character actor Mr. Ken Thiessen down in Boca Raton Florida I salute you of course of course Mr. Saj Boyle my number one uh, Facebook group administrator uh, of uh, the group uncensored hard-hitting truth a shout out to you uh, and uh, let me see, let me see. Shout out to Mr. Glenn Bean of Wisconsin, who now is 50% cured of his uh, venous ulcers, where that uh, orthodox allopathic medical science could not cure. He's doing it. He is doing it with food grade hydrogen peroxide putting so many drops in water diluted. Well, there are, there are, uh, there are some, uh, uh, Anthony Laura, I salute you, Anthony Laura, yes. There are some, uh, natural, uh, ingredients, etc., like, uh, for leg, uh, vein essential stuff, you know, you take care of your Varicose veins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look into that. I think even Swanson carries a few. Oh, yeah. Uh, I notice uh, Gary Knoll's Vitamin Closet has been advertising Gary Knoll products on Facebook. I, I haven't seen that in a long time. Wow. You know, but he bought out the Vitamin Closet a, a long time ago. He, uh, you know, uh, well, I'm glad to see that he has a home base for his products and not have to rely on other companies the other companies like Vitacost, the vitamin shop you know now he could go he could uh, shoot the works with his whole product line he's got a couple of uh, stores oh no no i didn't say he just has one. Oh, okay no it was a chain originally originally but now he could shoot the works with his product line so uh to use the gary no um and um, I see gloom and doom, man. You, listen, you people ask for it. You, you imbeciles, you imbecilic American voters ask for it, and you got it. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? Um, I don't know. I don't know. But the, the Attorney General was coming down on Donald Trump for uh, uh, something about putting a freeze on his Trump foundation. Some kind it's of already a, been going on. In New I, York. I don't know. Schneider, whatever. Hey. This administration, the 2016 campaign year as a whole, proves just how rigged and corrupt uh, crony uh, capitalism is ever since the Industrial Revolution and J.P. Morgan. It proves that it's rigged for the top 1% or top 20%. There is no logical reason for the poor or middle class to vote for a capitalist establishment political party. There's no incentive whatsoever. And uh, everything we discuss, it's back. Everything we discuss on the show Politically is part of our series Capitalism in a Conch Shell, or should I say Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch. Okay, yes, Cass King Neptune, yes. 
Yeah, yeah, nothing but gloom and doom. I, I, I just told it. I just told our viewers. Gloom and doom. Um, his cabinet picks are totally insane. Yes, I know. Well, maybe they're they're not so insane because uh, not from his point uh, of view. Don't many of the cabinet did, didn't many of the cabinet picks uh, give very uh, substantially to Donald Trump's uh, campaign? I don't know. Well, Conway comes Most from likely. Conway comes from a uh, very wealthy family, from what I understand. Well, well they're, they're billionaires, right? Yeah, she's not. She's the least of those people in there. Yeah. She's not. I don't know if she's a business person. Well, predominantly, person. predominantly, they're filthy rich. These cabinet yes. picks. So how uh, how can they possibly give a shit about the poor and the middle class? They don't. They don't. And of course, as I say, it's a business administration. Yeah. He hasn't given up any of his businesses yet. He's still got conflicts of interest galore. He hasn't shown us his tax uh, thing yet. No. He hasn't done any of that. But he's over there signing executive orders, which they all bitched about that Barack Obama was doing. Hey, man, he's, he's executive executive ordering left and right yeah and now that now that WikiLeaks doesn't have Hillary Clinton I've heard uh, they targeted Donald Trump they're after him couldn't happen to a better a better guy right oh, of course yes. his wife uh, 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 she's uh, on the, the front of Vanity Fair yeah but she she looks so miserable in photographs she looks like she's very unhappy so does Baron the kid Kid looks unhappy, and I can imagine he is. I I, I uh, posted this very, very funny video of uh, a Donald Trump taking the oath during his inauguration, and his nose starts to grow like Pinocchio. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, the poor woman looks looks so unhappy, and uh, and the kid too. But the poor kid, leave the kid alone. Yeah, well, yeah. I wonder if the kid can use the uh, the gold uh, shit toilet. You know what? I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he's not. He's not allowed to. Only, yeah. only Donald Trump's fat arse yeah. is allowed to sit on it. That's what I'm thinking. Well, how could you have a happy face as a wife if you're married to a, a very narcissistic egomaniacal, self-centered individual. How can there be you can, real... You have to sacrifice yourself, man. How, how could there be real love there? No. Because, so. you know, it takes two to dance the tango, and, you know, you can't have one one person that uh, is married to his mirror, you know, and expect that person to give love. Ah, you know what? Can't take it with you, brother. Uh, 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 hearses have no trailer hitch. Coffins have no pockets. It's unless you're Pharaoh. But, uh, offhand, I can't think of um, anything else. But let, you know what? Let us sink our teeth into these reeds. I think it's about that time. Well, let me just add here for a moment. Like we know all this about these kinds of people, these characters, yeah. these character structures, etc., uh, etc. Et yeah. yeah. And yet nothing changes. Nothing gets better. No. Every election year, the same right wingers get reelected and reelected. Right. I like to see term limits on everybody. To be honest with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't. But want as I say all the time to you, we have term limits. We, have, we don't but, use them. Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Uh, uh, how long has, has the ugly turtle-headed Mitch McConnell Over been 30 in? years. Well, sure. Those, he came, those, over those 30 years, 6, 12, 24, he came up for a re-election five times. Those uh, brain cell deficient inbred people in Kentucky keep on re-electing him. That's correct. Oh, nah, nah, now, nah, show nah, me nah, anything that he's... Like Show me anything that he's done for them. This is Mitch McConnell. He goes, rah, 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 rah. They're, 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 almost like Jimmy Stewart. The, the American people are not, are not going to stand for it. He loves saying that all the time. 
the American people yeah, are not going to stand they, for it. They, no, the Republicans are not going to stand for it. The CEOs are not going to stand for it. Yeah, they align themselves with the American people. Yeah, all the American people the are not going to stand for any of this uh, yeah. progressive liberal stuff. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You know what? You idiots that are not financially independent, you idiots that have to worry about paying the bills and where your next meal's coming from, guess what? Oh, you're going to feel the wrath of those uh, those right-wingers, without a doubt. Well, they want to run over you now with <laughs> cars and trucks and etc. when you're protesting. Oh, isn't that fascism? Right out loud, it's murder. It, yeah, it's it's murder and 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 it's uh, unconstitutional and um, it's fascism. Didn't the didn't fascist regimes uh, kind of like do that? They killed their enemies. Didn't didn't the the uh, in, in communist you know, China didn't they they shoot people at the Tiananmen Square? Absolutely. You know it's it's really strange. <sighs> Everybody is bitch bitching. They want to know about Putin. They want to. They want to know. You know. They the, better the worry real, about. Here. They want to know the real Putin and etc. But yet I've only seen uh, Gary Kasparov, the uh, ex-world chess champion, yeah. once. He ran against Putin. Well, because why has, isn't he on all the shows? Because he has a name. He ran against Putin. He knows Putin intimately. Why ain't he on the shows? Because... Telling us about this man. Because it's being censored? I don't know what it is. Or nobody... nobody. I only seen him once. Yeah, people, if the media is so preoccupied with Vladimir Putin, how come they don't uh, interview Kasparov? Exactly. Somebody who knows the man, ran against the man, understands the man. Well, the people of Russia do not seem, unless it's propaganda article, do not seem with the, uh, the new uh, Russia, uh, the, the way things are going, uh, you know, that, the, the Russia that Ronald Reagan wanted so badly. The people are not happy, they, 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 they want the nationalism back again and they feel Vladimir Putin is bringing it back and but he's not. He's aligned with all the uh, uh, upper business people. He's got a hand in everything. He's he's a businessman. Exactly. Exactly. So so the corporate oligarch is extremely accurate of uh, the the globalization of the world. And Capitalism. Capitalism after after uh, the Soviet Union fell, poison. Capitalism went in there like uh, like you opened a faucet, like the Ebola virus would rush into a into a host into a body. Well, it poisoned it. Capitalism exactly. poisoned. I mean, I mean, not that the Soviet Union followed Karl Marx right to the T, but uh, it got hell of a lot worse once uh, Gorbachev. Um, you know, once there, the Soviet Union fell. I mean, I got it. Got it. I mean, I don't know. I, I listen. I was told by my Russian friend during of um, during uh, the how is it Brezhnev? Those he, all of them. Yeah, during Brezhnev, when he lived in the Ukraine, he that says he had nothing to worry. Had nothing to worry about. He had so much leisure time to enjoy his friends, family, and to date. He had plenty of, uh, an abundance of good food at all times, uh, the free education, the health care. He says he was a very happy man. Right, apartments. But of course, the United States media uh, demonized that whole... Uh, of course. That's socialism, baby. We don't want that shit. They don't want that shit, but 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 somebody like Mitch McConnell will say, "Well, the American people are not going to stand for it." That's right. Yeah, they the 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 the, the rich capitalists don't want that. Right. I'm sure the poor would would welcome it. You know. That's why they kill the uh, CIA kills uh, certain leaders in South America for wanting to give land to the poor and etc. 
socialism, baby. Now, from what I understand, got rid of the, got to get, get rid of them. From what I understand, I don't know if it's the European Union or what, but um, there's a force that wants to um, with Africa because, of course, that's where all the gold is. They hey. want, they want to create this new gold-backed currency and not use the U.S. dollar. Actually, China wants to wants more m more countries to use their currency and they're trying they're trying to oust yes. the US dollar yes yeah. they're trying to change the financial system of the world yeah because they don't want to deal with the US anymore we're, we're hated and you know rightfully so hmm. rightfully so all right go ahead regarding consequences of weak crowd numbers revealed I stand in agreement with columnist Jonathan Bernstein in regard to President Trump opening an investigation into voter fraud. His feigned outrage is not because he lost the popular vote, but because he must protect any midterm Republicans running for office from voter backlash and also protect his own re-election attempt in three years. He must convince the nation that the popular vote was fraudulent and that he really is Mr. Popularity. Yeah, well, like he said many years ago, if you're, if you're a star, uh, you can grab him by the pussy and, and <laughs> do anything you want, get away with anything. Well, that's what he wants to be. You know, uh, he was actually the whole conversation was you know he would uh, single out a, a girl uh, that he's attracted to and just start kissing her. He says women Can't like this. He says women like that. He will also ask the states and the U.S. Supreme Court to enact and uphold new voter ID laws meant to discriminate against many. Hey man, all you really need is your your digital photo driver's license because you have to show your original birth certificate to get it and that should be enough should I have be enough. a I have identification cards straight from uh, the uh, motor vehicles no, from the state of New Jersey or whoever takes care of voting in this in the state that should be enough I have an ID card well that's all it ever that's was when ID. I go in there to vote I hand them the card. And why do they wh give me something to sign my name on? I sign the book. So why do wh why do minorities in these other states need uh, this uh, additional special voter ID? Card? They don't. They don't. It's meant to stop them from voting. Just like Texas wants to stop women who had an abortion from voting, they want to take away. They want to use their relig evangelical religious cult yeah. as an excuse to take away your, your right, to right as an American to, to vote. Choose, to choose, to choose, to well, choose. It, well, we're not talking You're about talking abortion now. We're not talking about Roe versus Wade. They want to uh, use that religious subject, that, 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 that unproven religious subject, as an excuse to take away your right to vote because they know nine times out of ten you're going to vote Democrat. Exactly. Yeah, if you want choice. If you want choice, you yeah. see, if you want choice, and, and if you're low income, it's a given you're going to vote Democrat. Anyway, go ahead. Most think he is just exercising his ego, but in reality he is, con he is a cunning businessman who always has an angle. We the people and the press must question his motives every time. Well, he needs reassurance. All you know, the time. That's why he gets so pissed on Twitter. I mean, he needs that constant reassurance. Uh, hey, Alec Baldwin, I got to salute you. I think I'm going to go out of my way to watch Saturday Night Live tonight because I heard he's going to have a field day tonight. Uh -uh. Alec Baldwin, man, he's got a steady job for the next four years. Rake it in, brother. We, the people and the press, must question his motives every time, all the time. Particularly in light of his gag orders and shutdown of government websites. 
Do not let anyone silence you and take away your rights to access your government. They don't want you to know anything. They don't want you to protest. Exactly. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, Dumb no, no. down America. The dumber the better. They don't want, they don't want public education. They want private education. Yes. Privatized. So, so only the rich kids will get an education. And you'll be, your kids will be dumb and, and, un, and uh, only qualified to be their slaves. Or sanitation engineers. Yeah, yeah, but new kids. Garbage men! Newt Gingrich will, uh, yeah, yeah, the kids, yeah, the kids must, uh, the, the kid, the children whose mothers are collecting food stamps must be custodians in the school system. Yeah, underage. Uh, hey, that goes back to J.P. Morgan and then child labor, right? Yeah, they want to bring it back. Of course, I told you that that was the birth <clears throat> of uh, the oligarch of, of right wing. Uh, uh, crony capitalism, the industrial revolution. Started yeah, before in, before that, it was aristocracy. It started in Manchester, England. Manchester, England. Before it came to the United States. Gee, thanks, uh, United Kingdom, for that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, we didn't have to take it. Well, we it. Uh, and of course, people that love the idea think it was uh, great, fantastic, and, and, and that people left the family-owned farms to work in the city. Some stinking factory. The greatest fa way to get ahead. Some stinking factory. Hey, the son of Ray, Ray of Aylward's Health Food Store told me back in the 1980s, you will never be ahead of the game ever by working for someone else. Exactly. And exactly, and that also goes with God's economic. And maybe this is why Northern Europe is uh, has created a an annual base salary, a base or monthly a base pay for its citizens, because they they probably realize that this this capitalism does not work for the masses. No, you have to have a stake to be yeah. able to participate. Because, because trickle down was a big lie. There was right. never a trickle down. Uh, I mean, uh, jobs are outsourced, and even if they weren't, there's no trickle down. No way. When the wine glass, right before it overflows, they replace it with a larger wine glass. Uh, that's the best. Uh, mental image I can put in your mind and then when that wine glass is about to overflow they replace it again and it gets bigger and bigger and the glass just becomes uh, enormous alarms went off for me when FBI director James Comey took unprecedented steps to politically interfere on several occasions in the run-up to the presidential election. Comey extended his influence beyond his role as an independent agent by wading into political machinations and in doing so I believe he denigrated the intelligence agency for which he served. The FBI director set a dangerous precedent last summer when he announced he would release additional information and materials providing context into the investigation of Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. He made the announcement flanked by cameras and media outlets in a 2300 word statement that cited intense public interest and the principle of transparency. He then took the momentous step of announcing the discovery of additional materials relating to the investigation just 11 days before the election. 
evidence shows that his actions in the days before the election gave a significant benefit to the Trump campaign. Comey shouldn't have given the July press conference about the investigation in the first place. The Department of Justice, which maintains jurisdiction over the FBI, has a very specific set of guidelines by which investigations should be handled. And, for good reason, criminal cases especially sensitive cases, should not be litigated in the public sphere. By making an ongoing investigation public and open for speculation, Comey contradicted the Department of Justice guidelines and exceeded his authority. Plain and simple, he changed the rules. In light of this precedent, I ask for additional information about an FBI investigation of utmost public concern, the 2008 financial crisis that wrecked our economy and cost American workers 10 million jobs. I sent letters with Senator Elizabeth Warren to Comey, asking him to release unclassified case files from the agency's investigation into the financial institutions at the center of the 2008 crisis. This was our country's worst economic disaster since the Great Depression. We have yet to receive even an acknowledgement of our requests. This is, uh, this, uh, is, by the way, is uh, written by Bill Pascrell, our, oh, really? our uh, Congress person. Oh, cool. Our Congress person. I find it stunning that Comey publicly disclosed information in one critical case yet would not shed light on a massive crisis investigation. Not one senior bank executive referred to investigators was prosecuted. Uh. President Trump has asked Comey to stay in his position as FBI director. So this issue is not in the rearview mirror. There are myriad issues that could arise under the new administration in which the American public will need full confidence in our government officials. Perhaps none more need of public trust than the director of our domestic intelligence and security service, the FBI. We must be able to trust that the FBI director, as well as the new US, U.S. Attorney General, are prepared to stand up to the new president should he attempt to influence Department of Justice decision making. Uh, I think it's possible for him. As co-chair of the Congressional Law Enforcement Caucus, I can attest to the strong record of the FBI as the law enforcement arm of the federal government. I have respect for James Comey's record of service. He has a tough job, which begs the question, why would he take such extraordinary steps? in the case of Hillary Clinton, while letting Wall Street executives off the hook. I think Obama went out of his way to protect Hillary Clinton and probably put pressure on Comey. I mean, uh, look, Obama had two private meetings with Bernie Sanders the spring before the, uh, 
the National Convention in Philadelphia. I mean, that was suspicious. But why would Barack go to Comey? Well, there was Comey, Comey. then there's Loretta Lynch. Comey, when he, when he did the two things against Hillary, he helped Trump. Why would Barack Obama, you know, want to help Comey? Do that damage. No, not help, not help, but but uh, Comey and Loretta Lynch were expected to do their jobs and but investigate the Clinton situation. But guess what? What? He did that, and guess what he came up with? That's what they told us. They tell us. But close your eyes. They came up with nothing. Right. That's what they tell us. But how do we know otherwise? That's not what Julian Assange says. Where did he get the information from the FBI? Uh, he just I didn't see him release any. He's like uh, anonymous. He has his sources. He has his hackers. He has his informants. But he didn't release anything. He didn't release any inside information on how the FBI was conducting the uh, investigation of her or whatever. Well, that's a big donor hole that's missing, I guess. Well, but the problem was that Comey came up and said, can't prosecute, she did nothing wrong, she may have made a mistake and this and everything. Not enough to be a criminal. Oh, concerning like the private server thing, the emails. She, nothing she did was criminal. That's what he came up with. Then, 11 days before the election, with wiener shit, Whoa, we got more emails about uh, uh, Hillary. Abaddon, Wiener. There was one. That's the point. He interfered with the election. Now, you say there was none, but, you know, you, you're you more to the left than I am. You want to protect that but woman. This has nothing to do with right You want left. that woman to be in the White House. This has nothing to do with right and left. Or the black man. These are the facts that are out there. Now, if you have any information to change those facts, well, to do change, so, but we don't. To change that information, I wouldn't say to change those facts because we don't know who's telling us the truth or not these days. Facts. That's true, but <laughs> in this particular instance, Comey had facts. Okay, Comey had facts. We, we must... We, Assange we mu not, did, did not. We must... All right, never mind. Go, continue. Yeah, but you have to understand that. You you want that broad to be the first woman president you of the see, United States. No, no, you, you took a... You took a... You took a, uh, a, a leap. How do we know it's facts that they got no dirt on her? Because it white didn't come out. How do you know if, if it, that it did come out, but they it was forced, it was purposely kept hidden by Obama administration? Obama administration had nothing to do with it. It was the FBI, Comey. Well, how come Comey? It was his investigation. How come? It, how <laughs> come the investigation of the FBI collectively with Comey and then Loretta Lynch and everybody? How come? It did not coincide uh, with all the articles I read online. Because the articles you're reading online, I've told you how many times, are bullshit. Well, you, well you, you believe the dirt on Hillary is a lot of it's bullshit. I don't. But there is no dirt on her. <laughs> From the investigation of the FBI with Comey, there was yeah. no dirt there. Now, if you want to say that she, you know, she's a Wall Street kiss ass and all this other shit, that's fine. But so but they are, weren't investigating. But so that. are many Democrats today. But they weren't investigating that. You know, Chuck Schumer is known to be a corporate Democrat. The investigation only concerned whether she uh, was mishandling uh, secret information. That's all it was. Right. And they came up uh, in July. No, there was nothing there to, to uh, prosecute. Yeah. Okay. So what you say? Then saying? he comes up eleven days before the election, 
and he makes it like there's something there with the wiener. Uh, emails, we'll find more on Hillary. And then there was nothing there. Right. Nothing. That's the point. It's not whether you like Hillary, dislike Hillary. It's or what anything. it's what is. That's correct. It's like me. It's like me taking his brand new scarf, that is brand new, by the way, and this is the first uh -huh. time I ever wore it. It's a lovely scarf, isn't it? And and me taking this new scarf off my shoulders and throwing it in the laundry and expecting a lot of dirt to come out of it. If right. it's clean, nothing's gonna come out. All right. All right, got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you, buddy. Comey decided to make a consequential and extraordinary change to the process of his own volition. He disregarded agency policy and the American public deserves answers. Recently, the Inspector General at the Department of Justice began an investigation into Comey's actions surrounding the Clinton case. The inquiry is said to be very broad, including the director's decision to reveal details of the case at his July press conference, and his decision to write the letter to Congress raising the specter of reopening the case as the long and divisive election season was winding down. Mm -hmm. I am hopeful that the Inspector General will find and root out problems where they exist. I also hope Congress takes note of this behavior and avoids playing politics with our criminal justice agencies in the future. While Comey should be held accountable, he was encouraged by congressional leaders who sacrificed the independence of our federal agents for an election season boost. This is short-sighted and dangerous. Our nation cannot afford to have this kind of unprecedented FBI and Justice Department incursion into politics. Thank you very much, mm. ladies and germs. Okay? Well, before we go to lunch, I, I want to do um, a Shizzler's Hall of Shame. We'll so do it now because... It's almost that time? No, it's not all almost that time, but... I got another uh, fairly good one, large one. Oh, okay, okay. Um, you know, are you familiar with um, charities out there that uh, take donated hair for, uh, yes, for, cancer. for children, cancer patients, for yeah. children? Well, guess what? A, pers a friend of mine who uh, has donated locks of hair mm -hmm. was told, uh, because she inquired, was told that they uh, they sell the hair to the families that have a ca uh, uh, children with cancer. Hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This is why. Yeah. By the way, Chisler's Hall of Shame and Doug T. All charities that collect donated hair that are meant to go. For for low income, poor, whatever. I don't even think it says poor or low income. Children that have cancer, that lost their hair, most possibly by chemotherapy, they are selling it to them. Let me tell you something. A charity should consist of volunteers, not people there to make money, not a, a, a blood-sucking CEO to, uh, to make a fortune. No. They should consist of volunteers. Uh, 25 cents or less on a dollar going to the worthy cause is uh, unacceptable, despicable, and uh, your administration problem. So, shame on you. You're in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. I'm putting lock, stock, and barrel, all charities, collectively anyway, because they're all scams now, 
but I, I'm targeting the ones that collect hair for cancer patient children. All right, that's they were it. looking. They were looking at a. I believe it was a veterans charity uh -huh. of some sort. Right. And in looking into it, they found that not one penny, not one penny, went to the veterans. Scam. Scam. Uh, yes. It's a scam. Yes. So it's so like it, a. It's like a, what's the word? Like a Ponzi scheme or a shell game or what about the. Uh, Three card Monty. What about those uh, containers outside the supermarkets where you throw in your old clothes and then they take the old clothes and they fix it up or whatever and they sell it? They don't give it. The Salvation Army. To the lighthouse the, or whatever. The, it is. the Goodwill Industry, yeah. Salvation Army. The motherfuckers sell it. Yeah. Yeah. You're all in the Chisels Hall of Shame. That's capitalism for you, baby. You're all in the Chisels Hall of Shame. And this shows. That the the demons that ran the industrial revolution have never really left. No, they croaked, but there were others to replace them. Yeah, because it's a me me thing. Well, it's it's about the get way of life, not yeah. the give way of life. Exactly. You know. So forget about charities, unless you do what I do, unless you physically give things to people in need that you know of. Now directly. That's what I do. St. Jude Hospital and Shriners. Well, I do respect St. Jude's Children Hospital. Well, you know, I mean, I've mean, never read an investigation about them or whatever, but they do say that uh, the clients, the kids, they don't have to pay for nothing. They don't pay for nothing. No, the parents. They don't pay. <laughs> no, they don't pay for food. They don't pay for. Uh, well, stand, it's, it's, donate, it's totally donate, everything, donation everything, uh, everything. Uh, reliant. Everything. Yeah, okay, okay. Everything. Well, I never heard a discouraging word about St. Jude's Children's Hospital. No, I didn't either. And uh, because um, I heard uh, that a friend, uh, a friend's, uh, well, a former friend, I heard that his child did pass away from leukemia. Um, I feel very bad about that because I spoke to the kid briefly uh, a few years ago and um, I, I don't want to I like I don't have I don't have first hand knowledge, knowledge. I was I was told uh, from a second hand source so I'm not going to go and go ahead and have a moment of silent prayer if the kid is still alive you know but uh, if the kid passed away I feel pretty rotten about it and uh well one and, in five kids who have cancer do die and 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 yes he 20%. he he did not listen to me about mm -hmm. any natural supplemental protocol he went with the with the uh chemotherapy he went with the orthodox medicine with the cancer treatments he he blew me off about whatever i looked up for him for for leukemia and he went ahead and and the kid had uh or it got bombarded with chemo. Mm. Now, and we all know about chemotherapy. Yeah. All right. Scientists <clears throat> on Thursday moved the hands of the doomsday clock 30 seconds closer to midnight amid increasing worries over political rhetoric. Tell me about this doomsday clock. I saw. I saw a, a, an image of it. What is it? I, I didn't bother to read it. The doomsday clock. As the hands approach midnight. Midnight means... Our demise. Our demise. Doomed. So End. It, so, End of it all. So it's very similar to, to my uh, um, uh, end time countdown banner. The end times countdown banner that we use here. Okay, well, we worries over political rhetoric, nuclear weapons, and climate change. Each year, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, a non-profit group that sets the clock, decides whether the events of the previous year pushed humanity closer or further from destruction. Well, it's always... Uh 
it's always daylight savings time in the spring for Republicans because they're always pushing the clock ahead since they all they care about is profit uh, before people on the planet so the clock when a Republican administration takes control the clock will go forward the clock is now two and one half minutes away from midnight. Oh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. There you go, Donald Trump. You'll find out that you cannot eat money once the planet goes. You cannot eat money. The closest it's been to midnight since 1953. Well, not just Donald Trump. All of them. Or the whole entire Republican Party, man, will not eat money in the end times when the hydrogen bomb was first tested. Well, the human race is a very vile species. Regardless what natural disaster... Oh, I guess that's why God had to kill them all one time. Jeez. Look, whether it be gamma rays, an asteroid, the super volcano, whatever. Whatever. The human race was so vile that God had to bump them off at one time. Saved only seven people. Now, of course, the size of Noah's Ark was not uh, uh, not to be taken literally that that a male and female of every creature will be able to fit on the Ark. It was probably DNA. Or DNA. eggs. Yeah, yeah. You, a lot of eggs. You can't physically put you wanna, um, you know. a male and female of every animal on that little... Pipsqueak arc. All right, go ahead. Scientists blamed a cocktail of threats ranging from dangerous political rhetoric to the potential of nuclear threat as the catalyst for moving the clock closer towards doomsday. This year's clock, the liberations felt more urgent than usual as trusted sources of information came under attack. Fake news was on the rise. And words were used by a president-elect of the United States in cavalier and often reckless ways to address the twin threats of nuclear weapons and climate change. Rachel Bronson, executive director and publisher of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientist said, while many threats played into the decision to move the clock forward, one person in particular prompted the scientists to act. Never before has the Bulletin decided to advance the clock largely because of the statements of a single person. But when that person is the new president of the United States, his words matter. David Titley, Lawrence Krauss of the Bulletin, wrote, the Bulletin pointed to President Donald Trump's careless rhetoric on nuclear weapons and other issues. President Trump, do not listen to Republican politicians. Listen to the scientists. But you're kowtowing to the party. That's the problem. As well as his troubling stance on climate change. Yeah, well, he, he must have a stake in the, in, the, in the oil business. He must have something going on with big oil. The current political situation in the United States is of particular concern. Titley of the Bulletin Science and Security Board said the Trump administration needs to state clearly, unequivocally, it accepts climate change caused by human activity. Well, I won't make fun of his name because he's the scientist. If he was a Republican, I would be all over his last name. There are no alternative facts here. Yeah. Last year, the clock remained at three minutes from midnight. 
Now it's only two and a half seconds. Yikes. Yikes. No, excuse me, two and a half minutes. Oh, so we lost a whole half a minute since last year. And Donald Trump. Well, his cabinet pick uh, definitely jumped that clock ahead. It was moved to three minutes in 2015. From its place at five minutes to midnight. Manhattan Project scientists concerned about the first atomic weapons founded the non-profit bulletin of the atomic scientists in 1945. They created the clock in 1947. Oh. An update, and they update its minutes and every year. I didn't know this. So you see how the media keeps secrets from us? I didn't know that the doomsday clock that was created that long ago. There you go. I was unaware of that. You were unaware. Okay, so we're ready for our invigorating break, right? Lunch break. What do you think? Oh, we got 11 minutes. Oh, oh that's why I don't see any commotion going on in the, in the ship's galley. Uh -huh. The ship's galley. Okay. Scientists. More scientists. More scientists. Science have grown human cells inside pig embryos. A very early step toward the goal of growing livers and other human organs in animals to transplant into people. Oh, really? The cells made up just a tiny part of each embryo the embryos were grown for only a few weeks. Well, you couldn't do that for a Jewish or Muslim patient because that would be, uh, that would not be kosher or halal. Yeah, it involves pigs. So. Involves pigs. So, you know. Such human animal research has raised ethical concerns. Ethical concerns. The U.S. government suspended taxpayer funding. Ugh. of experiments in 2015. Heaven forbid some sick person should survive and be uh, and become happy. He should be able to pay for his own liver and his own heart and his own lungs me, and his eyes and, and me, everything else. Let me tell you something. You, you yeah. fucking scumbag, uh, redneck, right-wing teabagger, evangelical, cultist pieces of shit. A country, a system that relies on paying out of pocket for every damn thing really sucks. The big one. It sucks. They don't have that in Northern Europe. Go ahead. Any growing of human organs in pigs is far away. This is just an early step toward the goal. Even before that is achieved, putting human cells in animals could pay off for studies of how genetic diseases develop and for screening potential drugs. Animals with cells from different species are called chimeras. What? Or actually chimeras. Chimeras. I know. CH I... sounding like KY. <laughs> I know Seoul, South Korea has a big cloning company there. Such mixing has been done with mice and rats. Larger animals like pigs would be needed to make human-sized organs. Yeah, because pigs have similar organs, similar size organs, sim similar organs to humans. Of course, different DNA, but you know, uh, they're not going to use primates. That could help ease the shortage of human donors for transplants. The SALK team is working on making humanized pancreases, oh, wow. hearts, and livers in pigs. What about making sure the human cells that you use will produce an organ that will be accepted 
by the uh, the patient, and where the patient does not have to take the damn drug, the anti-rejection drug, for the rest of his or her life. Well, we don't know that yet. If there is any right. such. Well, if you're, uh, if you're rich, then you would have your own organ grown like like what has already been done in laboratories for the wealthy. The animals would grow those organs in place of their own. And that they would be euthanized before the organ is removed. Right. And then you just, the rest of the, the pig becomes pork chops and sausage <laughs> and bacon and you minus that one organ. Most of the organ cells would be human. By injecting pig embryos with stem cells from the person who will get the transplant, ah. the problem of rejection should be minimized. Ah, that answers my question. So in other words, the human element should not affect the flesh of the animal or or they don't know or no they're not saying that so the animal will be euthanized to save the human but they won't you know you shouldn't use it as a, as a meat byproduct or you know, the animal should just be euthanized you know, maybe you could collect the other organs too Daniel Gary of the University of Minnesota. This is fantastic news. Who was working on chimeras, but did not participate in the New York work. Excuse me, the new work. I salute chimeras. Called the cell paper. An exciting initial step for this entire field. Scientists used human stem cells which are capable of producing a wide variety of specialized cells. They injected pig embryos made in the lab with three to ten of those cells apiece and implanted the embryos into sows. At oh. three to four weeks of development... Poor female pigs, huh? 186 embryos were removed and examined. Gotta love science. Can't stop science. Like George Costanza said, can't stop it. Gotta love it. No way, no how. Can't stop it. Uh, I wave my lucky shillelagh and say congratulations and good luck to Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Oh, uh -huh. when? Have you got that tomorrow? In the Super Bowl. I don't know. When is it? I thought it was tomorrow, oh. so I'm not sure now. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's All right, it. now for break. Now for lunch. Yeah. And you will not only see the all-new promo, uh, collectively it's the all-new promo because of the uh, very educational information that's in the front of it. So... Hit the pause button. Hit the pause button and read and learn. We'll see you when we come back from break, from lunch.
This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for a very educational new promo segment. Now we will sink our teeth back into these readings for the balance of progressive discussions. Seven bells for the second half of... Seven lucky bells. Dear Randy. There we go. One of my girlfriends is dating my ex-boyfriend. Oh, that's so awkward, isn't it? Sometimes. They, just, they just had a kid. Oh, gee. At a wedlock, at a white cock, and he started flirting with me. Oh 
Oh yeah, he wants the menage a trois. I'm not in a relationship, so I flirted back. Yeah, well, you know. Now, I am getting bullied nonstop because people say I'm going to break them up. Why don't people, honestly, learn to mind their own damn business? I think people that have no life are alike to stick their nose in other people's personal affairs. But, shouldn't they be mad at him more than me? Why is everyone jumping down my throat? I didn't do anything with him. It was just words. Either way, he's the one in the relationship. He shouldn't have done it. True. And yes, I admit, I was wrong on my part too, but not as wrong. Right? Well, he initiated it. He initiated it. You know, but, here, there again, it takes two to the tango. Two to dance the tango, you know. I need help. Help? She because like I go to a small school. And everyone here wants to jump on me. It's hard to concentrate on work with mean comments getting shouted out at me. You know, I noticed the smaller the towns, the more uh, evangelical right-wing freaks you will find. You know, everybody, everybody is so anxious for couples to get married, and once you're married, they're so anxious for you to have a baby. Maybe there are many people who do not want to follow the traditions of society. You ever think of that? They think of that in uh, a lot. They don't like it. And they certainly do not like to give you the freedom of choice. Well, you don't want to, to give do that. You want to don't want to give the freedom of choice. This is my answer to nosy people. A good hard crack across the skull with my blackthorn shillelagh. And that's why they want to repeal Obamacare and Roe versus Oh Wade. yeah, I forgot to mention. I was right. I, actually, we were right this whole time. The Republicans have no replacement for Obamacare hey, no. or, or any welfare for that matter. Any social services for that matter. There is no replacement. Drop dead. If you don't have the money to pay for everything out of pocket, drop dead. Or be our slave. I've said my sorries to everyone, even though it's none of their business. <laughs> Damn right. It's none of their business. Here's dear AB's answer. It should be apparent that your ex-boyfriend still feels the need to prove to himself that he's attractive to women, which makes him no prize. You were right to apologize to everyone. I hope the first apology was to your girlfriend. There is an unwritten rule that you're not supposed to date your friend's exes. Yeah, why is that? And frankly, this is the reason for it. Because you you tattletale back and forth. Because the if the ex is disgruntled after the breakup, she will put negative thoughts in her friend's head <clears> that's <throat> dating you, not realizing that not everyone is compatible and people are different. They assume that, you know, it was him. You know, if you're a male, automatically you're to blame. You know, by default. I can't stop your classmates' judgment of you. Neither can you. But you can hold your head high and tell him, tell them that you have learned your lesson. Very nosy small town people should really mind their own damn business. Really. <laughs> Uh, if you look at the uh, political map uh, and see the area in red. Well, that's why I, I always call them, uh, 
evangelical cultist freaks. Exactly. Freaks! They are from small towns, etc. Freaks! Freaks that, 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 first of all, even if you knew what's inside the Bible, you can't prove that your God exists. So, mm -hmm. but in their case, they don't know what's inside the Bible, and they also cannot prove that their God exists. Both. Like that inbred uh, chick with the big giant forehead. What was her name? Kim Davis? Oh my God. That didn't want to marry gay people? Yeah. And even though that was the law, that was her job? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freakazoid. Ugly, inbred looking woman. Mm hmm. I think she was from Kentucky, too. She got her job back. Well, because she's in Kentucky. I don't there know. A whole bunch of freaks there. I don't know if she's handed that job to over to someone else, but uh, not her job. I'm saying, I'm saying the job of of uh, you know allowing them to get married. This fucking guy, he's getting his jism all over the stove. You, you know, you're a filthy little ragamuffin. What jism? Yeah, he's up there sniffling and sneezing well, and that scratching. Jism. Ah, come on! An animal Jeez. has no business being. On a, ta a table, stove, or bed. Uh, let me do a little misbegun. All right, you know, American people, we're not going to stay for any of this. Wrong, wrong. Yeah, anyway, that was it. Mitch McConnell. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years. I am 26. He is 49. Manja, manja, 26 years old. Spring chicken. He has been married and divorced twice. <laughs> hey, stop your jism all over the place. I covered it. <laughs> I covered it. You I'm see? not by the stove. Mm -mm, no. But a sneeze can travel 50 feet. Well, that's because you listen to Gary No, well, he's a loop. fanatic. You know? 50 feet. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. 50 feet. 50 feet. I have heard from his friends that he has not had a great track record being faithful. My boyfriend's response to this is that I should believe him over his friends. I have just recently found out that he has been having an affair with another woman that he works with for almost a year. Amy? This is Dear Amy, by the way, not Abby anymore. Okay. I am completely broken. Oh, I cannot eat oh, or oh, sleep. Oh. He came crying back to me. Cry me a river. Telling me he wants to make things work with me. And wants me to move in immediately and get married. I'm not sure what to do. I have absolutely no trust in him. He has said he will do whatever it takes to make it work. He suggested counseling, which he never did in either of his marriages. And he has even suggested we have tracking apps put on our phones. So I know where he is at all <coughs> times. A part of me feels like saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. The other part tells me, give him a chance, because I still love him. One more chance. Very much. Amy's answer. Not to put too fine a point on it, but if a 49-year-old man with a cheating history can't manage to stay faithful, to a woman with whom he is in a relatively new relationship, then he is a certified and chronic cheater. Do not marry him. Do not move in with him. Do not pass go and collect two hundred dollars. I put that in there. What was that uh, serial womanizer like that? That the guy on a TV show was a uh, said to this other man. Uh, funny-looking lo uh, lawyer, Lewis, from this lawyer TV series, 
Yeah, I said, you're a serial, he's calling the guy a serial womanizer. That's the same thing, right? Chronic cheater, serial womanizer. Do not put tracking apps on your phone. This puts you in a position of trying to police his movements. A new relationship should not have the pressure of mutual surveillance in order to maintain trust. Your guy should pursue counseling for himself. Pulling you into counseling with him holds the assumption that you two have a relationship problem as a couple. No, he needs uh, uh, sex, uh, uh, what is it called, this, uh, uh, Sex Addicts Anonymous or something. He has a cheating problem. If you want to maintain contact with him, then he should demonstrate over a long period that he has gained insight into his own problems, is committed to change, and has demonstrated very real change. There are so many good men out there who don't cheat. Don't sell yourself short and make all your future choices in service of your own self-esteem and personal work. Good sound advice from this uh, Amy. Amy. Amy, Amy. Amy. Well, there should be people, people that are in the relationship often fail to see the red flags that others see. Sometimes others see, hold on for a second, this fucking thing. Sometimes others see imaginary red flags because it's often sour grapes, you know, uh, Misery likes company. Maybe a woman's girlfriends don't have anybody in, in their life and they're jealous of, of your, your relationship with your boyfriend. They don't want to see you happy. So you really have to look at the motive. You know, it's like false news versus truth in the media. Fake news, rather. All right, Doc. What's up, Doc? The record newspaper right. has taken an expected stance. I agree everyone duly registered has a right to vote. So duly registered. Why not enforce regulations? Is there a reason for not having the proper identification to vote? If so, take the steps to rectify the problem. Well, you need proper ID for everything else. And there is plenty of time before the next election is scheduled. New Jersey has a great system for obtaining driver's licenses. That's true. If you want to drive, you produce the proper identification. And the proper identification to get the driver's license is your birth certificate with a raised seal. Can't get better than that, right? Certified. Well, yeah, yeah, yes. That's right. If you want to vote, the same should apply. Things can be easy if you put forth the effort. But the driver's license, the digital photo driver's license, is in your possession because you have produced the ultimate in identifications, the proper uh, paper, papers to in show New that. Jersey, so what? you need six forms of identification. Yeah, they have points. Yeah. Each form is worth a certain amount of points. Right, you need to yeah, the show proof of address, which means it could be a, 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 a power company bill or right. something with your name and address. All right, right. now you've, you've proved that you have a bona fide, a real, address, mailing address, you prove that. Right. And you got your driver's li uh, your old driver's license, if it's not expired, your old driver's license is worth a whole bunch of points. Yeah. A whole bunch of points. If yeah. it's expired, well, it's worth some points. 
because it also shows where you live. It shows your photo and, uh, you know, I mean, why should you have to show your birth certificate a thousand and one times? I mean, usually once should be enough. You know, and they make it, I mean, I would make a copy of it and put it in a file. Yeah, but and then it should be on a computer. A computer file, right. Yeah. Right. Scan, yeah. scan, scan. Thank you very much to guest writer Mike Duhame for assuring me that everything is going to be okay. Uh oh. <laughs> as long as we just work and compromise with Donald Trump. Compromise? We'll that means agree wholeheartedly, right? It will be fine, yeah. Compromise with him? No, just agree with him. As he says, Trump is a great businessman who knows how to get things done. He wants to drain the swamp. Depends on the bottom feeders will be left though, fortunately, and they are. Get those Wall Street bankers out of our lives and cut taxes for everybody. Especially those at the time. Oh, somebody's feeling sorry for the rich? And the wealth will trickle down. Oh, really? Is that so? <laughs> We've heard that before. Oh, they, they believe the lies, don't they? I would say that Trump is a businessman who inherited his wealth and who has since made a career out of bankruptcy laws. He's filled his cabinet with the richest people ever assembled for these posts. Some of whom have disdain for the departments they will lead. Since being elected, Trump has further divided us by his unwillingness to reach out. Yeah, he's, he's also raised tensions around the world with his childish tweets and comments. Well, another big lie is the fact that what's good for business is good for the country is no. What's good for business is good for the businessmen, not well, the country. We've heard that before, too, when uh, that, uh, the Jumboloni uh, that uh, was at the head of uh, GM. What's good for GM is good for the country. You know, you know a psychologist back in the 19... no, no, a sociologist. Back in the 1980s, made a statement like that. Said that the definition of a Republican is believing that what's good, what's good for business, is good for the country because it creates jobs. What a lie that was! Or maybe it was it was accurate in what the Republicans will tell you, but it's still a lie. I find no reason to be optimistic. I grow more pessimistic every day. Just remember this man and his performance in the campaign. He is not someone I look up to. But all the people who seem to know him say, Trump is Trump, he will always be Trump. If we succeed in the future, it will be in spite of Trump. Not because of Trump. Well, zeroing in on Trump alone as the problem does not solve the problem. It's, it's something bigger here. The oligarch is not just Donald Trump. Okay, so try the, the problem is the American people. They, they do not hold anyone accountable. They uh, don't care because you say the word politics and they get turned off by it. Politics and the economy, they go to sleep. They go to sleep. They go to sleep. You talk about the music industry, uh, uh, legalizing marijuana nationwide, or 
you know, uh, what, what they had for dinner, their cute little new puppy or kitten, they're, they're, they're what their child did, you know, it's so adorable. I mean, and then they get all excited. But something really important, you know, like uh, global warming or uh, how they're being robbed as citizens constantly, and how they're being lied to as citizens, they don't get excited about that. All right, Doc. How are we doing on time? A spokeswoman for the FBI's Newark, New Jersey field office said that a suspicious letter yeah. had been mailed to an Alpine address on Sunday. An Alpine, New Jersey address. The day before White House counselor and an Alpine resident, Kellyanne Conway. Oh, I didn't know she's from Alpine, or she resides in Alpine. I mean, it's a big money town. Said she had been mailed white substance. Oh, that's, that's suspicious. At her house. And I has been assigned in Secret Service protection. The FBI, along with our law enforcement partners, responded to a suspicious letter in Alpine. That means she opened it up. I don't know. All right. Which, if it if it was not baby powder, and if it was something bad, once you open it up, and you're exposed to it. At this time, preliminary testing has indicated there is no threat to the public safety in connection to this mailing. Interesting. She added, we encourage the public to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity to law enforcement. Holder declined to say whether authorities had identified the center or whether they had opened an investigation into the incident. She also declined to say which address the package had been delivered to. But Conway said on Monday, during a televised interview with Fox News host Sean Hannity, the man that uh, interviewed Julian Assange in, in uh, London. That she had been the target of the mailing as a result of the media's critical coverage of her and her boss, President Donald Trump. Well, it's not just her, it's all of his cabinet appointees, as well as himself and his evangelical freak of a vice president. Because of what the press is doing to it now to me, I have Secret Service protection, Conway said. We have packages delivered to my house with white substances. This is a shame. Well, suspicious. It's suspicious. I mean, uh, listen, I don't feel sorry for anyone who is selfish to the point where they don't care what happens to poor people. Honestly, I don't care if you if you walk underneath a meteor shower. I don't care. But you can't. Uh, you know, your people do should not tolerate. Uh, you know, um, uh, ignoring. The, the ignoring of suspicious activity uh, in this day and age. I think there should be uh, courses offered um, free, of, uh, free of charge to the public to teach people how to look for red flags uh, in, in, uh, for security reasons, you know, how to, how to determine suspicious activity, you know, what to look for. Some of it is common sense, but, you know, 
like you know an abandoned shopping bag or an abandoned briefcase anything abandoned an abandoned parcel uh, you see something say something yeah yeah an, an unmarked uh, 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 um, <coughs> a van with with dark tinted out windows where people are just sitting there watching others you know just the, the, the vehicle is just sitting there with, with people inside nobody gets out you know what I mean? Suspicious activity. Mm. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, some parts of my town and some business parking lots, suddenly the halogen lights don't go on and yeah. it's very dark. That's not good for security. It happens here in our town. Not good at all. My husband and I were in Washington, D.C. last Saturday. Part of the huge crowd that was larger than the inaugural the day before. Oh, okay. We were there to return with the agenda being set by the President Donald Trump. I'm glad you said Washington, D.C. When you're done, I'll tell you. Our concerns range widely, which in itself is part of the problem. Trump's apocalyptic outlook and his rage to dismantle anything done in the past eight years threaten millions of people with deportation, loss of health insurance, increasing inequality from tax cuts for high-income earners, possible trade wars, crises from native foreign policy and more. The immediate manifestation of this is a set of cabinet heads with little experience and often outright hostility for the areas they will be charged to manage. Elections certainly have consequences, but as the numbers Saturday showed, there will be strong and vocal, loyal opposition that is not going to go away and will hold our government accountable. Well, uh, uh, apparently Donald Trump's Washington, D.C. hotel, uh, there seems to be a problem there where the construction people are being stiffed by Donald Trump. He's pulling the, uh, the, same, crap. the same typical crap that, uh, the, that he pulls uh, over the years. He, he, he says he doesn't like the work that was done and he stiffs you for money. So he is obviously st ha is stiffing some people involved in the uh, remodeling of this hotel. Uh, it looks like an old post uh, ar office. architectural structure, huh? Post office. Yeah, yeah, post, yeah. Post office. Yeah, and uh, and uh, he what he what he does is he says he doesn't like something about the work, or in the case of his uh, the caterer who did uh, his daughter Ivanka's wedding reception, he doesn't like the food and uh, work that was done in Atlantic City uh, at one of his hotels. He, doesn't, he didn't like the work that was done and he uses this as an, as an excuse not to pay for the services and get it for free and, um, and then claims, well, you're getting, pl you're getting lots of uh, publicity for your business because uh, you did work for me. Because of my name, you're gonna make you're gonna make uh, so much more money in, in business, and he uses this as, as as an excuse not to pay people. You know, so uh, it, th that's his typical typical routine that he has, Donald Trump. And uh, since his father was a slumlord, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Mm -hmm. So, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Inductee number two, President Donald Trump. Our country is so polarized. If some of us do not agree with something, we create havoc and undermine our laws. <coughs> I am not a fan of Donald Trump, the man, nor of Barack Obama's policies. Can we give the president a chance to succeed? 
He worked hard enough to obtain the position, and if he fails, the left can crucify him at will. Hey, Bernie Sanders worked pretty damn hard, but he got screwed. No one has the right to impose their ideas on others. Rather, we should grant them the right to say them, not belittle someone for his opinions. A nation is destroyed from within. We are all in the same boat, and a shipwreck does not care who survives. Yeah, well, we're too far gone. And all, all around, all ways around. The, the only thing we have left is the fact that they don't have enough votes in the Senate to, to break a, uh, a filibuster, right? A filibuster. To override a filibuster. Yeah. That's the only, uh, that's the only uh, uh, silver lining, uh, speck of silver that's in the dark cloud of the United States of America. That's it. There's nothing else. I mean, uh, I hope that the Our Revolution organization um, forms a, a new progressive non-establishment third party and brings all of the progressive heavy hitters together. I hope that happens. That's really look. If they're asking for donations, so if you're if you're going to take donations for a progressive organization, you might as well have people donate to a new progressive party instead of an organization. You know, I mean, you need you need a home base. You need a foundation. People, you know, what the hell is an organization going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to support Democrats and expect them to work for you? You know, the DNC. I don't see the DNC uh, um, appointing a progressive to run it. I, and I heard Ellison is selling out. I don't know how true that is. Ellison is becoming a uh, a sellout progressive. Not that I know of. Well, then the article is a lie about Ellison. What did they uh, say he's doing? He said he's turning he's turning corporate this, and he's uh, mm -hmm. he's turning his back on on being progressive. I haven't heard anything. You know. Protests are great, but let's not only curse the darkness. Let's light a candle. Democrats have been desperately trying to avoid blaming themselves for Donald Trump's victory. It is their fault. But Hillary Clinton lost because the current Democratic Party fights for average Americans only when campaigning. She wasn't even getting in touch with the common citizen then, during the campaign. Not before the agreement with uh, Sanders. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, they, they just, they went with a bona fide loser of the 2016 election. They, they screwed the winner, Bernie Sanders, and they picked the loser. That's it, plain and simple. Uh, after getting elected, they do the same. In fact, they do the exact opposite. And Clinton has been a poster child for this behavior. The campaign rhetoric Clinton used looked very different from the one she used in 2008. Because she was chasing different voters. Clinton attacked Bernie Sanders on guns. But she was a pro-gun churchgoer in 2008. Well, she was a Barry Goldwater campaigner too when she was young. And Clinton, who was against same-sex marriage in 2008, changed her opinion on same-sex marriage after it became popular in 2012. Since 2013, Clinton has been paid millions for dozens of speeches 
by corporations and big banks, giving many voters the impression that she is on the side of the super rich and not on the side of average Americans. While her personal emails added to her electability problems, Barack Obama's hypocritical performance as president made her defeat a certainty. Obama won because he held, told us, he had told us, he was a man of the people who stood up to Wall Street. But his presidency increased wealth inequality and poverty levels. If we light a candle, we'll see that Democrats didn't lose because of FBI, FBI Director James Comey or Russian leader Vladimir Putin. The Democrats lost because Despite what they say, they are no longer the champion of the working class. Well, Loretta Lynch having a private meeting on a plane with Bill Clinton was a huge red flag. And Americans now want that champion. Champion? Good luck. For the working class. Yeah, you had a champion for the working class, you idiots. You screwed them over. And then, you know, he went ahead and kind of gave up because he endorsed Hillary Clinton. He didn't have to. I would, his legions would have voted for him. But just not as, as a Democrat. But uh, that's about it, right? If you want, yes. We're done. It's after four? Yes. We're done then. Okay. Okay, people. It's been uh, lovely. Loverly. Have a safe weekend. Have a safe week. And we'll see you next time on Progressive Discussions. Bye bye. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.